Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explaining on pattern allowances. So basically, in this video, starting with the introduction of pattern. So a pattern is a mold forming tool in the hands of foundry men, or you can say in simple way, a pattern is a model or that will be representing as a replica of the object to be cast. So whatever you want to make with the help of casting process, it will be quite similar as from the shape and size. Then except for the various allowances, a pattern exactly resembles the castings to be made. A pattern is required even if one object has to be cast. A pattern may be defined as a model or form around which sand is packed to give rise to a cavity which is known as mold cavity in which when the molten form of the metal is to be poured and after the solidification process the result and that will be a cast product or you can say cast object. So pattern allowances so basically if you want to make a good dimensional accuracy with the help of casting process so you should go for the different pattern allowances. So basically a pattern is always larger into size as compared to the final castings. So that will be the basic difference between pattern and cast product because of it carries with the certain allowances. The various pattern allowances are below. Just you can see first one that will be shrinkage or you can say contraction allowances. Second machining or finishing allowances. Third, draft or taper allowances. Fourth, distortions or chamber allowances. Sick or you can say wrapping allowances. So let us start with the first one, shrinkage allowances. So into the shrinkage allowances, what happens? Almost all the cast metals shrink or you can say it will be get contracted volumetrically after the solidification process. So into the casting process what happens the molten form of the metals so basically it will be higher the melting points so it will be in the form of liquid and that liquid it will be pouring into the mold cavity and after the solidification process it will be your cast product. So during the solidification process each and every material gets shrink. So the shrink or you can say contract volumetrically after the solidification process and therefore to obtain a particular sized casting the pattern is made oversized. So the pattern it will be always larger than the cast product. So what happens an equal amount of that shrinkage or you can say contractions. So that will be known as a shrinkage allowance. So each and every metals get shrinkage during the solidification process. For getting the better accuracy or you can say better dimensional accuracy. So such kind of shrinkage allowances is to be considered. The different metals shrinkage at different rates because shrinkage is the property of the cast metals or you can say alloy. So which kind of alloying elements that will be added into the molten form of the metals according to its proportions and its characteristics it will be having a different rates. So you need to take calculation for that particular materials. The metal shrinkage depends upon basically the cast metal or alloys, pouring temperature of the metal alloys, casting dimensions or you can say size of the castings, casting design aspects or you can say complexity of the jobs, molding conditions it means mold materials that will be sand mold or you can say mold it will be made with the metallic materials and molding method is being employed. So that will be by manual molding methods or you can say also use a machine molding methods. So in the case of this one, so in general case, molding conditions. Cast iron poured at higher temperatures will shrink more than that poured at a lower temperature. So that will be also one of the parameters for the shrinkage allowances. Wood patterns used to make metallic patterns are given double allowances. 
So if you want to make a metallic patterns with the help of wood patterns, so at that time it will be given a double allowances because one pattern that will be used to make a another patterns. So one for the shrinkage of the metals of the pattern and the other for that of the metal to be cast. So that will be all for shrinkage allowances. Then second one, machining allowances. So in case of the castings is given an allowances for the machinings because of casting get oxidized in the mold and during the heat treatment the scales etc thus the form needed to be removed. So during that particular solidification process into the castings it will be oxidized. So you need to removing that kind of scalings onto that particularly surface and that scales it will be formed onto the cast body and that will be removed. It is intended to remove the surface roughness and other imperfections from the castings. It is required to achieve the exact casting dimensions. So for dimensional accuracy you need to work with the some machining processes like grinding, drilling as per the mic requirements. How much extra metals or how much machining allowances should be provided depends upon nature of the metal. So in case of the ferrous, non-ferrous metals, ferrous metal gets scales where non-ferrous metals do not. Because of the ferrous metals that will be containing with the irons. So due to the presence of the irons, it will be always forms a iron oxide. And after the solidification process, you need to removing all the iron oxides. Second one, size and shape of the castings. So basically, longer castings tend to wrap and need more materials. It means it will be having a allowances to be added to ensure that after the machining, the casting will be all right. Or you can see in simple way, it will be having a good dimensional accuracy. Third one, the type of machining operations. So different kind of metal cutting operations, it will be carried out onto the that cast products for making a good dimensional accuracy as well as the surface finish. So for that grinding, turning, milling, boring, as per the my requirement of the shape and size is to be employed for the cleaning the castings as well as grinding removes the lesser metals as compared to the turning. So according to my requirements, it will be performing the secondary operations onto the cast product. Then fourth one, casting conditions. So it means whether the casting conditions result into the rough castings or you can say semi-finished one. Casting conditions includes the characteristics of mold material etc. So that will be the fourth category that will be also depends on to the machining allowances. Then fifth one, molding process is being employed. So in case of the die casting products, parts which is need little machining allowances Whereas in case of the sand castings, it requires more machining allowances. So which kind of casting process is going to be used or implement according to that, you will make a calculations for a machining allowances. Number of cuts to be taken. Machining allowances is directly proportional to the number of cuts required for the finishing the castings. So that will be also one of the parameters. And last one. The degree of surface finish desire onto a cast product. So that will be all for a machining allowances. Third one, draft or taper allowances. It is given to all the surfaces perpendicular to the parting line. So such kind of allowances it will be perpendicular to the parting lines. Draft allowances is given so that the pattern can be easily removed from the molding materials tightly pack around it without damaging the mold cavity so that will be the necessary steps it will be not not damaging the mold cavity in the case of the removal of the patterns to make a mold cavity the amount of taper depends upon first shape and size or you can say length of the patterns into the depth directions in contact with the mold cavity. Second, molding methods. 
third one mold materials so basically draft allowance is imparted on internal as well as the external surfaces of course it is more on internal surfaces so just you can see that will be the pattern without draft so if it will be your sand mold so this is the cop sections and this one is your parting lines so the sand it will be filled into the cop and pattern it will be placing into that particularly sand mold so after removing the patterns just you can see it will be damaging the kvt is being formed into the sand mold so just you can see that will be the damage caused by the removing of the patterns if it will be not providing the draft allowances but into second case just you can see pattern with the draft allowances so draft means it will be having some taper sections or you can say extra materials it will be providing onto the pattern so this is your draft is being providing onto the materials so by the placings of the such kind of patterns it will be having a draft allowances so just you can see it will be making a exact shape and size of the kvt in the case of the sand moldings so the figure shows two patterns one with the taper allowances and the other without it so it can be visualized that it is easy to draw the patterns having a taper allowances so out of the mold without damaging the walls or you can say edges so by the application of the draft or you can say taper allowances it will be not damaging the mold cavity and that will be also help for easily escaping or you can say easily removing of the pattern from the sand mold so first taper on external surface so basically that will be equal to 10 to 25 mm per meter and for taper onto the internal surface so that will be around 40 to 65 mm per meter then next and that will be distortion allowances so basically into a castings will distort or can say evaporate so first one it is of irregular shapes second all its parts do not shrink uniformly so some parts shrinks while other are restricted from doing so third one it is u or v shaped fourth it has long rangy arms are those of the propeller strut for the ships it is a long flat castings the arms possesses unequal thickness one portion of the castings cools at the faster rate as compared to the other sections so that will be all the belongs for making a distortion allowances so basically distortions can be practically eliminated by the providing an allowances and constructing the patterns initially distorted it means what the out size is the opposite direction so that the castings after the cooling neutralize the initial distortions given on to the pattern and acquires the correct shape so that will be the basic requirements it will be performing on to the pattern making process the amount of distortion allowances may be vary from 2 to 20 mm depending upon the size shape and the materials to be casting then sec allowances so a pattern is second by the striking the same with the wooden pieces from the side to side so this is done so that the pattern is loosened a little into the mold cavity and can be easily removed so some kind of seeking onto the pattern so that sec allowances due to that seeking of the pattern so that will be enlargement of the mold cavity so in turns therefore the seeking enlarges the mold cavity which results a bigger size of the castings sec allowances is normally provided only to large castings because it is negligible in case of the small castings and is thus ignored the magnitude of the sec allowances can be reduced by increasing the taper 
so i hope you like this so if you like this then subscribe and share modi mechanical engineering tutorials thank you so much and keep watching